Happy Wednesday, everyone, and welcome to the Libra Lounge with Keisha. I have a very special guest live in the studio with me tonight, Miss Erica Rose. Hey. She is an attorney. You have your own law firm. Mm -hmm. Okay, but I love her so much because of the VH1 show, hit show, season <laughs> one. Season one, not season two. Season, season two one, dude, dude. Season <laughs> one of Your Cut Off, and you guys may know her from The Bachelor. Yes. That's okay. All true. So, <laughs> okay, I have to tell this story real quick. So, whenever your cutoff was on, how many times, producer James? How many? I, I, know, I know. How many times what? <laughs> how many times did I watch each episode? I don't know how many times. It never stopped playing. So, my daughter uh, is 17 now. And mm -hmm. so, I told her you were going to be on the show. She goes, Oh, that's how I learned the word lobotomy. <laughs> I think it was just says something like you needed a lobotomy. Yes. She goes, that's how I know the word. I'm like, I can't believe I played it that much that's that so my funny. child remembered that. So we are very excited to have her in the studio. We also want to give a special thank you to Sherry of Classic Bar by Sherry. She's got a new commercial that we're going to premiere tonight. Isn't that right, Producer James? Or was that completely wrong? And I don't know what I'm talking about. It's right now. <laughs> She still has a special going on. If you mentioned the Libra Lounge with Keisha, you get $5 off of your first bar class. All right. If you are a fan of the Libra Lounge, you know what time it is. It's time for the gab. We know she has a really big mouth, which sounds kind of dirty. And that's probably true, too. Let's gossip the gab with Keisha. Okay, so yesterday we finally got to see Kim Kardashian and Kanye West's newest baby, Psalm, Psalm West. Did you see his picture? Yes, he is so He's cute. He's very cute. I am obsessed with his name still. I just love it. So, okay. I think the name is kind of cool. Mm -hmm. I still think Saint is the best of the four. And Chicago is by far the worst <laughs> of the four. I don't know why you yeah. would name a baby Chicago. Chicago's dirty, isn't it? Isn't Chicago like windy, bad weather, not like real cute or anything like that? And they named the baby girl. I like, I personally like Chicago. But you what? Both of my daughters are named after places. They're Holland and Aspen. So, but those are cute names. <laughs> and I great mean, places. Yeah. And good places. Yeah. <laughs> Chicago. But I think Chicago is so pretty. And it looks like Psalm looks a lot like her. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe uh, the surrogate babies come out prettier somehow. I I was right? thinking the same thing. And I'm like, <laughs> how many more children? I mean, you're so wrong for laughing <laughs> Kim, Erica said it. I didn't say it. All your babies are beautiful to me. <laughs> no, they're awesome. um, the, the last two look a lot like Kim. Mm -hmm. and the, They do. And Northwest is just like Kanye's twin, yes. you know. But they make pretty babies. They, you know, say dumb shit on Twitter sometimes. and But, you know, both the – well, okay, I was going to say both the parents are talented. Kanye's talented. <laughs> uh, but Kim, what do you think about Kim – going to law school i love it if it really happens because i feel like it makes lawyers seem cooler now because kim kardashian yes is and so i'm like yes it's giving us some like street cred in the instagram world you know so okay nine times out of ten if i were in court it's probably because i did something illegal and if kim kardashian was um the other attorney i just would be like but i've seen your titties <laughs> like I saw you having sex with Ray J. Yeah, like, I never watched it. I know <laughs> oh, about you it, did? But I, I just chose not to watch it. I just don't want to watch it. You didn't miss much. <laughs> you really didn't miss much at all. Just a lot of ooh, ooh, ah, ah. It, that, uh. That's really, really it. I mean, she got a good dick and down, but you know, <laughs> here's my thing. That it, if it weren't for that video, I think Kim Kardashian would still be Paris Hilton's sidekick or what was she? She was her assistant. Yeah, now she that was I think doing about her closet it. organizing. Yes, I yes. And now I don't think Kim Kardashian has <laughs> to clean up not anything mm -hmm. ever again in life. So, Sam, so, um, it was nice to see you. You have beautiful skin tone. You're a cute baby. You look like you've got good hair. You're going to have a great life with two crazy parents, but you'll have to want for <laughs> absolutely nothing in the world, okay? So next up, Jennifer Lopez actually had a concert, and she had her daughter, Emmy. You know, she's got the two twins, Max and Emmy, from her ex-husband. What marriage was that? Marriage 25? Was it 25 or 26, James? <laughs> I'm not even... I, was it with Mark Anthony? It's with Mark it? Anthony. So oh, that was see. 78 and a half. Okay, so wait, let me see. I think Mark Anthony was number 
three because it was the very first guy when she was like on in living color mm -hmm. and then it was chris judd who was the choreographer and well then she was engaged to ben affleck mm -hmm. and then she married mark anthony now she's with a rod damn jennifer you get around girl like that is really jenny from the block okay <laughs> so she had her daughter emmy come on stage and they did a duet together the little girl i've seen videos of her singing and she really really is a fantastic singer she most definitely got all that talent from her dad not uh -huh. from her mom <laughs> i mean j-lo can do a lot but i don't know why we keep letting her record songs J-Lo needs to be kind of like a background, like way in the back, actually like an alternative background singer. She's a good entertainer, but singing skills, she just, it's its okay. But if you want to be on my show, Jennifer, you can sing on my show. Don't get <laughs> you come on the show. So her daughter, Emmy, looks like she could have a really good future as a singer. She sings better than her mom does. I, really? I, yeah, I she does. It. I'm like, that's all Mark Anthony right there. <laughs> so something else that happened over the weekend was Chris Pratt and Katherine Schwarzenegger got married. I still feel some kind of way about it. Well, I yeah. said Schwarzenegger, right? He, what, you, you expected me to say it wrong, Producer James. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. No. I saw the look in your eye. Okay. Okay, so these two got married. I don't, that just seems like a weird coupling. I'm a big Anna Ferris fan, his mm -hmm. ex-wife, so I feel like she can do no wrong, so I'm still mad at him about that. Yeah. I don't know what happened, but I'm still mad. They have not said, she was actually at the wedding. Okay. Um, which, that's great. Her and her son mm -hmm. were there. But it's just like, how did they even meet? Just Hollywood. now? Yeah. No. I just, I I don't, I don't know. Um, But congratulations. Um, as long you? as Anna's cool with it, congrats. It looks like Anna's good with it, which mm -hmm. means she's got she's get, having good sex. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> if she wasn't having good sex, she would be totally protesting that wedding, mm -hmm. talking shit about Catherine. You know, maybe from this we will have Chris Pratt. What's the character that he plays in the dinosaur movies? What is it, Jurassic Park? Yeah. What's Jurassic his name? Uh, Owen. Owen. Maybe Something. Owen and the Terminator will come together to fight dinosaurs from the future past. Write that down. I'm on to I, something. I'm so not going to write that down. I'm on to something. That, like how? Okay. so a, You know what? I tell you what. We can pitch that to sci-fi. Not that's HBO. Okay okay, yeah, no, sci-fi. Right. Yes. Yeah, you know I like a good sci-fi movie. So me, if I were Chris Pratt, there's no way in hell that every time I saw my father-in-law, I, I would have to do an Arnold Schwarzenegger, Schwarzenegger movie quote. I can't say it right now. <laughs> I would be like, I'll be back. And you won, ugly motherfucker. What else? <laughs> it's not a tumor. Give me another one. I'm on a roll. I'm on a roll. Don't let me down. Don't let me down. You're going to let me down. I don't know any. Really? I'm trying to think of one from Kindergarten Cop. But I that that was the, the, it's not a tumor. Okay. Uh, what? Get to the chopper. Get to the chopper <laughs> from Predator. Yes, yes. Every time he would hate me. He'd be like, that's. That son in law needs to be fired. You forgot my favorite quote. Which is Maria, why'd your arm break again? What the fuck is that from? <laughs> His wife, Maria Shiver. Skeletor. Oh my God. <laughs> really? She's basically a pile She's of funny. antlers. Oh, here's another one. Do this one. Do this one in the same accent. No. Maria, I did not have sex with that woman. That boy child is not mine. <laughs> Do it, because you know he had the, no, the kid. Can't. Oh my God, that that was the worst kept secret ever. It as really soon as that kid well, was how about the fact that the kid much. looks just like Arnold with the tan? Oh yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so all right. So after this break, we're gonna get all in Erica Rose's business. So stay tuned. Are you looking to lose weight, improve your posture, have muscle definition, increase flexibility, and reduce stress? If you answered yes, then Classic Bar with Sherry is the perfect invigorating and dynamic workout for you. Bar technique is extremely safe and is designed to stretch and tone with a splash of cardio. The method is the foundation of ballet with the flow of yoga. To learn more about Classic Bar, call Bar Instructor Sherry at 281-678-8037 or stop by the studio at Femme Fatale located at 689 FM 517 West, Suite 300, 
Dickinson, Texas 77539. Your first class is only $10, and if you mention the Libra Lounge with Keisha, you only pay half. Make sure to follow the studio at Femme Fatale on both Facebook and Instagram. You can also email Sherry at barandyoga at gmail.com. That's bar, B-A-R-R-E, and yoga at gmail.com. All right, so welcome to the Libra Lounge, Erica. Thank you. Thanks so for having me. when producer James told me you were going to be on the show... I was so excited that I could not possibly display the excitement. So I just played it real cool. I'm like, oh, that's nice. Okay, cool, cool, cool. But then I thought it was going to be a phone call. Oh. And when he told me it was in person, I was like, holy shit, balls, are you serious? He's like, I'm serious. <laughs> so what what is it like growing up in Houston from a well-known family? Um, it was interesting. I don't think I realized it until high school. Mm -hmm. But at the time... I was like, I mean, maybe I realized it a little bit like in elementary school, but I was really embarrassed of it. Mm -hmm. I remember we were on the cover of Health and Fitness magazine mm -hmm. and my mom did an interview that was totally a lie saying my brother and I <laughs> love to eat healthy. We didn't like French fries. We only like to eat strawberries or something weird. And mm -hmm. this boy at my school made fun of me about it. And I was like traumatized and so embarrassed. <laughs> So growing up, I just – I think I was really shy and I was really embarrassed about any type of attention. I, th right. I thought it was embarrassing that my dad was a plastic surgeon. Mm -hmm. I don't anymore. But right. I would lie – like at camp, I would tell people, oh, he's an orthopedic surgeon or I'd make something <laughs> else up for some reason. Right. So I think I was always really embarrassed about it until probably like high school or college. Right. I, who who was it? Posh Spice. Uh, she mm -hmm. used to be embarrassed of her family and that she was rich. Mm -hmm. Like they would take her to drop off at school in a Bentley. And she's uh -huh. like, can y'all like drop me off like around the corner and I'll walk. I could not have been born rich. <laughs> like, I, yeah. why are you shaking your head like that, Producer James? Because you're bad enough, like in lower <laughs> middle class. <laughs> like you're already the princess of petty. I, I can't imagine what yes, you'd be yes, like yes, with some yes. real walking around money. I know, real. I know. I, you couldn't tell me shit if I, were, you know, had like real money, money. It's just like I'd walk around with a tiara on my head, you know, all the time. Okay, so what made you decide to audition for The Bachelor? Actually, it was my dad's idea. No, it was. Um, I had recently graduated college, and I had just broken up with like my longest relationship before my husband, mm -hmm. and I was living with my parents. I was like twenty, almost twenty three. And my dad saw it in the Houston Chronicle, and mm -hmm. he said, you know, why don't you go and do that? I, but he really didn't think I would get cast because mm -hmm. he felt like it was a long shot. So I went to the audition with two of my girlfriends. Mm -hmm. One of them wasn't even single, which was funny. <laughs> um, and then I ended up getting a call back. I think it was like a few days later, and mm -hmm. the producers were still in Houston. And then from there, I – few weeks after that maybe a month I found out I was in the final 50 people in LA mm -hmm. um and then when you're in the final 50 you basically have like made it on the show they're just right. kind of like finalizing I don't even know if it's a final 50 but they fly a select number of people out to LA and for three days and so yeah I was super excited so once you found out that you were going to be cast on the show what did mm -hmm. your parents say then um I mean they were like Excited. We knew who The Bachelor was. Sometimes now um, people audition and they don't know who it's going to be yet. Okay. But in the ad, I guess, or whatever, in the Chronicle, it said it's Prince Lorenzo Borghese. So I genuinely felt like, okay, you know, this guy and I could be a good match. I wouldn't right. have necessarily auditioned for some of the other seasons because I don't think we would have had as much in common. Mm -hmm. um, and he's still one of my closest friends, honestly. Is he, he came, married now? No, he's still single, but he so was single. at my wedding mm -hmm. um, a few years ago. And... I excited all my single girlfriends. I'm like, we have royalty coming. Get ready. <laughs> but none of them were smart enough to hook up with him. So Aww, he's still man. single. <laughs> Girls, y'all got to trap a prince when you see one, okay? Exactly. So what was the audition process? Like, what do you have to do? Um, I think I always just tell people, be yourself, but like a more interesting version of yourself. Mm -hmm. And so just come and be you, but like turn it on. Right. You know, right. like ramp it up, have some coffee, do what you need to do, look your best. Be excited, have a few drinks, I don't know, just – and find out, like, the things that make you interesting and different than everyone else. And don't try to, like, emulate a character or a person that you've seen on, like, a previous season. Because um, since I was on the show, mm -hmm. they've had me um, come to a casting in Houston a couple of years ago. And I felt like a lot of the girls weren't – like, were trying too hard. And right. they were being, like, a weird version that wasn't even themselves. And so none of them got cast. So right. it's really obvious if you're, like, being a fake person. So you mm -hmm. can't do that. Just, like, 
find out what your quirks are if you have any and like ramp those up basically okay so bitches be yourself but better okay exactly. <laughs> all right so <clears throat> looking back do you think that you and lorenzo would have had a successful marriage together um i think in the sense that we're good friends and so you should always marry your best friend my husband and i are best friends my husband's a gemini lorenzo's a gemini so there's oh. that and they actually get along really well so lorenzo really liked him mm -hmm. so i do think um if lorenzo you know ever does he will one day get married because he wants to have kids mm -hmm. but had he have wanted to get married at that point i do think it could have worked because we are such good friends i don't know if the sexual chemistry was there right um I you, thought, can you can find it you can yeah you can find you know, it yeah. so yeah it could lots have of margaritas and you know a couple of bottles of wine you can find the sexual chemistry <laughs> exactly. there yeah. okay so you know the bachelor is one of the longest run reality shows um do you think that it is time to end it i kind of do i feel like this season's the first season and I, I like her so it's mm -hmm. nothing about hannah it's just i'm not that into it i feel i think kelly ripa kind of like you know buried it when she mm -hmm. insulted it and then they fought back at her and i feel like the ratings are slipping and right. people are just not that into it but i'm still gonna watch bachelor in paradise yeah because when yeah. it first premiered i do remember watching it i think i watched seasons one two and three mm -hmm. and then i felt like okay it's kind of predictable it is. Um, the black girl, you know, you're going to get cut the first round. But now they're <laughs> keeping them longer. Yes, they, they are. are. So it's kind of like it's, <laughs> it's, 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 it's very predictable. But I mean, there's some diehard Bachelor fans there out there. Are. Yeah. But it is slipping, I feel. Yeah. A what, little bit. What, what would you say are the do's and don'ts when you're filming a reality show? Hmm. So I, my one of my do don'ts was don't drink too much. Drink Ooh, a little bit okay. though, like have a few drinks because right. you need to loosen up. Yeah. But somehow I always was able to find that fine line. Mm -hmm. I was never into. I never like couldn't remember anything. I was never that intoxicated. Right. Um. I never threw up. Which trust me, there was plenty of people doing all that. Really? And dehydrated. Yeah. But I felt like there were certain occasions that, yeah, they were handing out drinks and you needed to have one to loosen right. up because otherwise it was stressful. So manage your alcohol levels appropriately. Mm -hmm. Also, as a girl, um, make sure that even you come like maintain so you don't have to always do your makeup because you're right. not going to be in the mood to do it. So like have your lashes done. It's too hard to maintain a spray tan, unfortunately, but like bring self tanner. I don't know what you can do about right. that. Um, get Make sure your hair looks good. You know, it sucks. I had back then I was so much smaller because I hadn't had kids yet, but mm. I was constantly having to like diet. And I remember before I went on the first season, The Bachelor, the producers said, encouraged me to like lose 10 pounds before I went on the show. And I was pretty really? small. Yeah. And it, they didn't say that to everyone, but I did talk to some of the girls who were like normal sized girls, mm -hmm. not the stick thin ones. And they encouraged, you know, them to, to lose, lose some weight too. Pounds. Yeah. Because the camera does add 10 pounds, honestly. Right. And they can capture you from weird angles. Yeah, I'd be like, look, I have my own camera crew here. <laughs> <laughs> they know what lighting I need. They know what angles mm -hmm. to get me from. Um, you know, I think it is marriage boot camp. Mm -hmm. Have you heard of that one? Okay. Yes. So I know they are not allowed to have their cell phones. We can't either. Really? For how long? Um, up to The Bachelor's up to six weeks. Um, I was there about a month. And then... Bachelor Pad, Bachelor Paradise is about three and a half weeks, but and no cell phones during no. that whole time. I remember on Father's Day they gave us one of their phones so we could call our dads, and yeah. mine didn't answer. I'm like, I felt like I was in prison, <laughs> and it was like my one phone call, and I got the chance to like talk to like a human, you know. And he didn't answer. I'm like, thanks, thanks, Dad. Dad. Like uh, so all annoying. you have to do is answer the phone. Yeah, one yeah. job, answer the phone. Okay, <laughs> that would drive me well. It Maybe now it's worse because I'm a, a mom, so like yeah. I need to know. So they let parents talk to their kids oh, every few days. Okay, that's good. I wasn't a parent back then. Okay. Um, but I also felt like that's why I'm so close with my friends from the show is that we didn't have all those distractions around. Right. We weren't like yeah. sitting around on our Instagrams the whole time, so we like were forced to have a lot of conversations and get to know each other and interact a lot. You were know? there any fights? Um, not on Bachelor stuff. Not really, but on my VH1 show, you're cut off. I yeah, really those get to girls that later. were ghetto for sure. Mm -hmm. But on, I mean, my season, the season I did at The Bachelor, I felt like they were definitely classier than some of the other seasons because they matched it to a prince. So like, right. none of these girls were really fighting, you know? Okay. Yeah, because they were all trying to be like prim and proper, exactly. um, you know, to become a princess. Mm -hmm. So do you think that the winners or The Bachelor are predetermined by the producers? 
I kind of do because so after I was eliminated on The Bachelor, um, they had me stay in Rome for another week and judge another competition on a different episode. But they didn't tell the girls who was judging it. They just said, oh, there were six girls left at that point. And they said, Mm -hmm. oh, someone's in the other room. And she's going to pick the two winners to get special one-on-one dates. But I didn't really get to pick. They said, pick Jen and Sadie. And this was when there were six girls girls left. And those two ended up being the final two. So that's when I finally – that's when I first realized, okay, it it seems like they're picking the final two at this point. You know? Mm -hmm. It was interesting. So I do think – but of course, I feel like if the guy is really into a girl is really into someone, they're not. They, I mean, they do certain things. Like for example, with Ari season, he was really into Lauren, but they wanted it more interesting. So I think they encouraged him to pick Becca, knowing that he would change his mind. I really do believe. Wow. That. Yeah. Okay, so I know you said that you and Lorenzo are still mm-hmm. friends. Are you still friends with any of the other girls? Yes. Um. At least, like I'd say, seven or eight were at our wedding. Oh, okay. Um. Girls from my season of Bachelor, and also some from Bachelor Pad. Okay. Okay. So we don't get to get together that often, but when we do, it's so fun. Well, that's good because I know sometimes you see people on reality shows are like, "Mm -mm, no, (laughs) not at all. I don't accept their request on Instagram or (laughs) anything like that. So since now you're a mom of two girls, what would you say if, because I'm sure The Bachelor is Mm -hmm. still going to be on when they're adults. (laughs) If they said, you know, we want to audition, what would you say? Um, I mean, I don't necessarily know if I would stop them because I'm all about people doing what they want. Mm -hmm. I totally feel like my oldest one could be like The Bachelorette. She's just so cute Mm -hmm. and so pretty and just the best. (laughs) Um, the baby's really cute too but she's still a baby so it's like I don't know her you know what I mean I don't know her personality as well Uh Um, I both I think they're both gonna have no issues dating though right and so they should have guys always competing for them not compete not the other way around I agree honestly so they need to be on the bachelorette yeah yes okay so when we get back (laughs) from this break we're gonna talk about your law career and your cut off we'll be right back Hey guys, it's Keisha, the host of the Libra Lounge with Keisha podcast and web series. If you follow me on social media, you know that The Million Harris is one of the sponsors of the show. I've told you all about the great hair products for both men and women that they have, but I wanted to give you an opportunity to actually see some of their hair bundles. Here they are. What I did was I ordered both 20 and 22 inch Malaysian bundles and a frontal from the Million Harris and took them to my stylist and had her make this unit. Yes, this is actually a lace front unit made from the bundles I purchased at the Million Harris. I usually don't wear this much hair extensions nor do I wear it this long, but I really, really love it. The hair feels amazing. It looks great. I've been getting compliments everywhere that I go. So make sure to go to her website or stop by the shop and get your order on. She's got hair products, bundles, and mink lashes. Make sure to use my discount code LIBER20 for 20% off your total purchase. Welcome back. Okay, so we have talked about a little bit about your childhood. We talked mm-hmm. about you being on The Bachelor. What was harder, law school or being on a reality TV show? Mm, I think it was hard because I was doing them at the same time. Oh, shit. So it was yeah. just a lot. <laughs> I like look back to those four years of law school, um, and I did it in four years because I filmed three shows during that time. And it was just like, I don't understand how I did it, I guess, because I was in my 20s and I just didn't sleep. Yeah. We don't um. have to. Yeah. It's a lot easier when you're in your early 20s. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So, do, shit, how do, I mean, how did you remember all the stuff you needed to remember for school I, while you were doing the shows? I don't know, like, how I did it. I just did somehow. <laughs> And then it was just a crazy time period, but fun, but like good. It was like right. really fun. Um, I mean, sometimes law school was boring, but at the same time, I felt like it kept me grounded because mm-hmm. who knows what I would have been doing if I wasn't in law school and I right. was filming. I might have just been like roaming around L.A. Like that was before the days of being like a social media influencer mm-hmm. was a thing. That would have been your thing that for been sure. Thing. Yeah, I would yeah. to be a lawyer then, right? So what kind of <laughs> law do you practice? And you, uh, you also have your own law firm. Yes. So tell us a little bit about that. I started my own law firm, um, the Eric Rose Law Firm, and I have my master's in entertainment and media law. I got that in L.A. Mm -hmm. at Southwestern, and so I specialize in that, but that doesn't mean that I only represent people in the industry. Like, media law covers defamation, privacy, publicity. I also do some, like, sexual harassment, Mm -hmm. civil litigation, and then I do some family law. Um, Before I started my own law firm, I worked at a pretty well-known family law firm, 
And I learned so much about it, but I realized I wanted to be my own boss and expand my practice yeah. areas too. Most definitely. So to date, what has been your toughest case? I think my toughest case was really the first case that I had when I went off on my own and I didn't expect to get a case in the first few days of starting my own law firm. Well, damn. But yeah. one of my friends <laughs> sent it to me because he doesn't do family law. And it was a custody case and it was really hard because you want to make your clients happy, but at the same time, it's not up to you. It's up right. to the judge. Yeah. And you can't create evidence that's not there. And so it's hard when it's really not in your control. Yeah. It's the judge's decision. Right. And unless they abuse their discretion, everyone has to accept their decision. Right. Yeah. And family court is is, is tough. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, it is. So if you could have... Oh, go ahead, Producer James. Yeah, family court is tough. But I think so is dealing with corrupt uh, PR firms. Oh, for example, what? Oh. What say that again. What's a I said, uh, <laughs> I'm sure family law is tough, but uh, I can imagine a few cases with some corrupt PR firms and things like that that you probably mm -hmm. dealt with. So what producer James is really alluding to yeah, is that um, we hired some, a, P a PR. Okay. And after working with mm -hmm. her for what, maybe two, three months. Yeah. We found out that she wasn't doing any of the things she was supposed to be okay. doing. She actually went as far as to have someone pretend to be a local news reporter. Uh -huh. um, even like, yeah, she would have someone <laughs> I mean, else call. Crazy it's, to me. Yeah, yeah. She would have <laughs> someone call pretending to be uh -huh. someone else. Mm -hmm. um, she was supposed to be getting me a proclamation in the city of Houston, which I'm like, I don't need that. Right. But she didn't even put in the paperwork. Mm -hmm. What else did she do? Did she do anything really? She worked harder at not doing her job yeah, and making us like think. She, like, yes, spent a lot yeah. Of time and efforts not doing her yes. job. Yes, and it was very <laughs> hurtful because yeah. it's just like you took our money and you didn't do anything, did and you, you were claim, file came against her. Yeah, we, we're not sure what to do. Was it recently? They'll be. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. There'll like be an entire reaction. Oh video yeah, the last month. Oh. Well, yeah. I mean, let me know if you want to do anything about it. You definitely have a cause of action, and there's damages based on what you've paid her. So, well, did you did you follow the whole uh, James Charles and Tati goodbye? I sister? did. Okay. Yes. So, you know how James Charles came back with all the receipts. All mm -hmm. I have all of that. Okay, good. So I've got like text messages of her talking about other clients and their oh, sexuality. Wow. People uh -huh. who may not be gay or who don't want to be out. Mm -hmm. I've got screenshots of her sending me like bank account information from oh, my no. other clients. Girl. So it's a it's a lot. It's a lot. Yeah, she yeah. better watch out. Yeah, she I was messed just with the wrong girl. I think she fucking did, mm -hmm. and that's what I told her. Um, so it, it's just been a a hot mess. Well, come in and see me if you want to. My Producer James is in Greenway Plaza. Yeah, we're gonna so uh, before you go. We want to get all of your information yes. so people can know how to contact you, social media, all that good stuff. Okay, so I am a big reality TV fan, such a big fan that like my friends make fun of me mm -hmm. because that's all I watch. There's like maybe mm -hmm. two or three scripted shows that I can actually sit down and mm -hmm. watch. Uh, but you're cut off. What year did that premiere? 2010. Damn. I can't believe it was so long ago. Really? I feel old, yeah. I don't feel like it was that long ago. Nine years, girl. Okay, so that was one of my favorite shows. And, mm -hmm. you know, we at DVR'd all the shows. So he knew you don't get rid, you don't delete any episode of You're Cut Off and you don't delete any episodes of <laughs> That's a Raven because I'm still a 13 year old <laughs> child. Um, but we moved. Yeah. So. It erased Wait, are you everything. guys married? Oh, yes. I didn't know husband. that. That's oh, so yeah, 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 yeah. First, I thought y'all were just like best friends and he was your producer. Then I was like, maybe they're married. He's my flunky. Oh, that's so cute. <laughs> How long have you guys been married? Four years, but we've been together 11 years. As a, like, as working together and then you fell in love? That's so cute. Oh, no. We went to high school oh, together, okay. graduated together. Okay. And reconnected during um, our 10-year high school reunion. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I love that yeah. story. It seems like he's been around for fucking ever now. It's just like, <laughs> oh, my God. Um, so it deleted all the episodes. And, of course, to me, it was all his fault. <laughs> so did you get cussed out about that? 
I don't know if I would classify that as a cussing out, as more of a nuclear napalm scorched earth, <laughs> motherfuck you, 18 different ways to Sunday kind of uh, I was thing. really distraught. And you cannot find it on Amazon. You can't watch it on VH1. I know. And if I YouTube it, it's just like maybe mm-hmm. five minutes of a show. I'm like, I can't My live like this. Side, I guess he hasn't been able to watch it. It's not, um, it's not on demand. No, nothing. I, and I'm tired of living that life yeah. without watching the yeah, episodes I, I again. Should say, I should find a way to make them do it. Can you make that happen for me? I'll try. Please. I mean, <laughs> just, I don't know. I yes, I still look, like, once a month, I still see if I can find it somewhere. And I'm like, mm-hmm. God damn it. Okay. So, if you're not familiar with the show, basically, there's a group of ladies. Y'all were all in y'all's 20s, mm-hmm. right? We were. Who were princesses, basically. They were spoiled and their family. Family sent them to kind of like a, a, what was it, a princess recovery boot camp or something <laughs> yeah. like that. Um, and you guys are really sh- stripped away of everything, no money. Okay, I have to ask you, when they told you you could only take certain items mm-hmm. that would fit in that bag, I remember yeah. you were the last bitch yeah. out there, okay? Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> what 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 was going through your head? I, just, I mean, I was like, okay, after since I had already done – the bachelor at that uh-huh. point and all the girls were like i better run in to get like the best bed and i'm like you don't really sleep a lot on reality shows uh-huh. and that's like the least of my concerns like i really needed to take time to like not just throw stuff in but like coordinate my outfit i was like sitting around and coordinating it like matching the shoes yeah matching the hats matching you had my champagne purses. glasses that went in with you too yeah. i don't remember that i was like we had to coordinate. i spent so much time like shopping and preparing i'm like I mean, it was kind of nice in a way to consolidate because I definitely brought too much. Mm-hmm. So I really did a great job. And actually, it was annoying. The girls were like borrowing my stuff the entire time. Since Even the bitches do- that didn't like you? Yes, because they didn't do a good job coordinating their outfit. I would have like, but <laughs> you just c- tried to cuss me out. You're not going to borrow my shit. Yeah. Okay, so you guys are, you know, it starts off, you guys are each shopping. Mm-hmm. And then you go to pay for your stuff and your card is declined. I know. I, was, I remember being so embarrassed. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. Like. I was like, this can't be happening, you know, and I yeah. told them maybe your machine is broken. You did. I remember <laughs> I that. Like, yes. Crazy. And I think, who was it? Jacqueline was like, can someone call my dad? And mm-hmm. Gia was like, what? No, it's your machine because I've got plenty of money in my account. See, I remember. Oh, yeah. I, I know. So was that was that like 100% legit? So, or? I mean, our cards weren't really declined. They had, but we didn't know at the time, but they had okay. set it up with like, the store people um, mm-hmm. to tell us that. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, we we had, a, I guess, I think at that point, I still didn't know exactly what was going on. I just literally thought my card wasn't working. Mm-hmm. But I did see the other girls because, I mean, we were all in the mall, but we were like being kept separately. Right. But I could tell, oh, that girl, I remember seeing Jackie actually and being like, she's on the show. She's cute. Because mm-hmm. they each had like a person, a, a producer with them and like a camera. So it's like you knew these were the other girls. But they coordinated it, like, after the store incident. They're like, okay, stay here. And they're like, okay, go down the escalator now. And they were timing it so that we'd all head to that, like, common meeting area at the right. same time. And we still didn't really know what was going on at all until um, the life coach, Laura Barron, appeared to tell us. Right. And after that point, they actually made us sign new contracts with the show. Because our original contract said we That's were appearing right. on a show called The Good Life, which I yes. thought, like... From a standpoint of someone that had been on a reality show mm-hmm. before and watched a lot of them, I was like, this is going to be kind of a boring show. Like, right, right. When it was The Good Life, they were like, it's kind of like The Hills, but, like, you're going to be showing off your extravagant life. And I remember being worried, like, how much money am I going to, like, spend during this right. process yeah. to, like, show off my lifestyle? Right. Like, you know, and they're like, well, don't worry. There's going to be some type of different element to it, but we can't tell you what. And I do remember one of my friends, um, his name's Jeremy, saying – oh, it's going to be like the simple life or, you know, you're going to get something. He had a feeling and he was right about it. And I was like, no, that's already been done. There's already been the simple life. You're so wrong. Like, no, I didn't I was, believe it. I was, so, okay. <laughs> so let's take me, for instance. If I had been in the store and my car was declined, I would be on the phone mm-hmm. yelling at my husband. Like, and they took what is going You didn't have so your phone. So we couldn't do that at that point. Oh, because that would have messed it up. Yeah, okay. exactly. So they had already taken our phones. And then, um, so when you're in the room where all the girls kind of congregate, uh-huh. there's a screen and each one of your relatives or your parents mm. is on there telling you what's really going on that right. you guys are cut off. There's no more money, no more nothing. Your mm-hmm. life is totally different. And yeah. I remember your mom was so cute with her. It's like <laughs> some of the other parents are like, you need to start because watching your money. And your mom's like, 
Yeah. Because <laughs> I don't think my parents really felt like they had that much to complain about. Actually, originally, they wanted my dad to say he was cutting me off. He told oh, me this later okay. on. And he refused to. Because really? in his opinion, I definitely did not need to be cut off. I was, like, in law school right. and, like, you know, working to an extent of, like, right. filming these shows and getting paid for it. And, like, I really didn't like have a spending problem right. honestly like I wasn't like like some of them were like I remember Jess's mom was like you're a dad and they're like running our family under the ground into debt and, like yeah. nothing like that was happening so they didn't really have that much to complain about with me you were like look my parents real rich bitch we ain't got no <laughs> nothing's going on okay so when you guys get to the house you you got into some shit the very first night you and yeah. Gia she was just weird I felt like she had a very negative energy towards me and like I like because I'm like into that kind of thing. I sense energy a lot. Mm -hmm. And so I just felt like a very negative vibe from her right away. Yeah. And I didn't like it. So I wanted to address it. Right. And bring it up. And, and you I was said hoping something we could resolve it. About her being Middle Eastern and she just got Because I'm Jewish. Off. And so I felt like maybe it was our ancestry that wasn't getting along. <laughs> but it, it straight pissed her off. <laughs> but I don't know why. I mean, that's her heritage. It's my heritage. Being Jewish, they're equally popular slash unpopular. So right. she's no more of a minority than I am, to right, be honest, right. in terms of our re religion. Right. So I don't know why it made her so bad. I feel that you should be proud of where you came from and not mad about it. So that yeah. was weird to me. I think that she just did not vibe with mm -hmm. you. So I don't think it matter. It would have mattered matter. what you had said. Exactly. She was going to be pissed off. Yeah. Okay. So the first night comes, you guys get your, your oh, those rooms. Just, oh, the fern. Yeah. Ugh, ugh, ugh. yeah. And I ended up in a room with Gia and the people I didn't like because I spent so much time coordinating, coordinating my outfits. Your outfits. Yeah. So I would have rather been in the other room, honestly. But at the same time, I'm happy I still did that. Erica, you kind of cheated a little bit too because you started putting <laughs> clothes on top of clothes on yeah. top of clothes. And but hat. that me exactly. and you're like but i am gonna need this i'm gonna need that mm -hmm. i'm like erica i don't think you need that champagne glass <laughs> but go ahead is that a champagne bottle that you okay 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 so you guys get in the first night mm -hmm. then you start your challenges so the funniest challenge to me mm -hmm. was when you guys had to clean Omarosa's house. Oh yeah, and that was the one that I didn't like and I didn't do. You and Gia, now y'all y'all came together <laughs> on that because neither yeah. one of you did it. Y'all wouldn't clean. even put on the goddamn uh, mm -hmm. uniforms. I, they weren't, <laughs> actually we sneakily did try them on off camera and they were really not cute. No, they weren't flattering to if anyone they shape cute, at all. we would have worn them like if they were like little French maid costumes like we totally <laughs> wouldn't have cleaned but we still would have worn that outfit. <laughs> but they just really made us look bad and we were like, we're not wearing this. So we, I think we sat in like her jacuzzi which wasn't yeah. even warm because that's when she that's cold. when Omarosa <laughs> saw y'all and she got mad she got pissed off well the funniest thing was when Jess was cleaning something and she thought it was vomit mm -hmm. and she's like is that vomit it's vomit it's vomit and I'm like oh God, that would have been me <laughs> okay so I have to ask you this question because Omarosa has been on see I had met her before that oh you had yes we had met after I was on The Bachelor. Mm -hmm. um, we went to a party at the Playboy Mansion. It was like a fashion show. And we were seated by each other and we were friendly. And so that was also part of the situation is – I felt like it was disrespectful to ask me to clean one of my someone that I knew, knew that. house. But not only that, I just hate to clean. Like me I don't too. even clean my own house. Me, 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 me. So I'm certainly not gonna clean someone else's for that yeah. matter. Like to this day I don't even clean. Um Do you know somebody <laughs> like that, producer James? Somebody that uh doesn't quite partake of the uh let's say domestic arts. Yeah, yeah, he does the yeah. he does the laundry. He, does he cleans up. <laughs> I don't do floors. When do, uh, mm, That's mm, how I, I am. Can't. I don't I mind cooking though, but my husband knows when I cook, it's gonna be messy, and he needs to clean afterwards. For and sure. my thing is like, you have an option. I can cook and fuck up the whole entire kitchen, <laughs> exactly. or I cannot cook, and we can mm -hmm. figure something out. So okay, That's I have to are. ask you this, and you don't have to answer if you don't okay. want to. But Omarosa has been on other shows. Mm -hmm. In every show she's on, someone says something about her having bad breath. Mm. Is that true? I don't think I noticed it. Really? Because that's the kind of thing I would probably remember because I'm really into smells. <laughs> and about, like, if a, there's a bad smell, like, yeah. it's gross to me. But I don't remember noticing it. Okay, because she's been on, she was on, <laughs> Luckily, like, two I other did. shows and I'm like, oh, my God, her breath. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, is it really that bad that she have, like, gingivitis so or something funny. like that? Um, <laughs> she probably does. But luckily I didn't get, I mean, she got pretty close to me and I don't remember noticing it, luckily. Okay. So you did not, <laughs> that wasn't the only challenge that you didn't participate in. Mm -hmm. That was just the first of a couple, right? Yeah, I mean, I did participate after that 
more so. That was just one that I really just wasn't into. Right. Okay. So I have to ask you, do you still get Botox in your armpits so you don't sweat? So I still get Botox, but I haven't done it in my armpits in a while, honestly. Mm. And I probably should. I mean, I don't really sweat that much, but maybe I sweat more. Back then, it might it must have been more of an issue because I remember doing it in case I was wearing like a silk mm-hmm. shirt, which I had this like cute pink one, and I didn't want to like sweat. But I don't feel like I sweat that much. No, the, so, I don't remember I don't you. Know but I, do I don't think you did a lot of stuff to sweat. <laughs> yeah. I do work out now. I mean, I just don't sweat that much, so I haven't really had to do it again recently. Producer James, do you have a question? What well, is curious? How effective was that? Did it? Did it, it really? It was very really effective. Like I don't really? even think I had to wear deodorant really after that at least for the six months or whatever that it oh, lasted damn. so i should probably do it again um but yeah. no i'm not thinking for you for me I, <laughs> I sweat really bad all the time especially on my face see that's the thing is so i get botox here so my face never sweats but i feel like the place i sweat when i work out is between my boobs well, my that's boobs just kind of you know when you're well i mean they don't like this. sweat to the point where they like show in my right. shirt but they get like sticky and gross yeah i don't like it my face is the worst place that i sweat and it's embarrassing so i've actually considered you know getting do botox it. for that reason okay so do you uh you caught a lot of heat from the other girls do you keep in touch with any the of them the funny thing is um guess who invited me to her wedding jess yes and she just got married she you know, just got married because i we're facebook friends oh, that's so funny <laughs> What about you and Leanne? Um, so she goes by Kukla. Right, I Kukla don't know Leanne. Why, but she does. But we did hang out when I lived in LA. We hung out like a lot. Okay. Um, and we do now that I don't live there anymore. Like, of course, I invited her to my wedding. She didn't come. Mm-hmm. But um, we were good friends when I lived there for many years. So let me see. From the cast, you've gotten married. Jess has gotten married. Mm-hmm. Jackie's gotten married. Yeah. And I think and I met Jackie's. It. Um, so Jackie and I were really good friends for like a year or two after the show, and we still keep in touch. But mm-hmm. I met her now husband. I loved them together. Mm. They were together for like seven years. I mean, I think I got engaged before her, and I'm like, girl, when is he gonna propose to you? Like, mm-hmm. it's time. So I was. Like, I know really that happy. feeling when you're dating somebody forever. <laughs> See, not never, me. Well, not with never. my husband. We got engaged after two and a half months of dating. It was like Holy a bachelor shit. all over again. But we knew each. We were like you guys, where we didn't go to the same high school, but we knew each other and we're in the same crew of friends in high mm-hmm. school. Um. He was my best friend's date to our junior prom, and then she ended up dating my date, and then she was the maid of honor in our wedding. Oh, how funny. Keep um, it all in the same little circle. Crazy. <laughs> we still have, we have a picture from that night, and it's so funny because in the picture, it's like me and my like punk date, and then my friend Brittany, <laughs> or, and then him, and then my friend Brittany. And it's like if you cut out the two people in the middle, then we would be together. Be together. But like we totally did not look like we should be together back then. Usually, those are the people <laughs> that you end up with is yeah. someone because people are still shot the producer. Hell, you were like, are y'all married? Yeah, I'm like, yeah. The first day it was we just I don't look just like we would be married to one another. Mm-hmm. But someone has to put up with my crazy ass. <laughs> That's and... fine, but my husband's just as crazy, so it works. So, um, okay, so <laughs> you no, you don't keep in touch with Chrissy. No, I never kept in touch with her, really. So it was so funny because um, I'd read on a couple of blogs that she wasn't even rich. Yeah, I know. I think she had like a boyfriend that hate a sugar daddy. Mm -hmm. I remember. She was really pretty. I remember thinking that. she Like her body was so good. She was super pretty. Um, But yeah, she had a sugar daddy, I guess. Which was interesting. And Leanne did too. I want a sugar daddy. I mean, I know, right? But I want one that's on an oxygen tank, ninety nine. <laughs> He's gonna die like immediately yeah. after he signs everything over to me. You know that kind of. I'm talking Anna <laughs> Nicole Smith and that billionaire guy. That's what I'm looking for. So, yeah, Chrissy was <laughs> unlikable. She was. Um, she, she was. She just was. It just. Huh. And, I think and that's why she got eliminated. Yeah, though. and then like, she we always wore those girl. funky floral dresses. Uh-huh. It was just like, ugh, what, what is really going on? <laughs> and those church curls in her hair. And yeah, yeah. So you and Gia. So Gia and I did reconcile. Like after the show, she had. She used to own this hookah bar um, mm. in Los Angeles in Sherman Oaks, and it was almost like smoking the peace pipe. Like she invited me down to her hookah lounge and. I can't, my best friend who's gay came mm-hmm. with me and um because you, you have know, to have a gay friend when to. you're smoking hookah exactly like, everyone knows that and I remember she <clears> had <throat> all these girls from the show the bad girls club there too like oh, do you know really? Nat- Natalie Nunn? yes mm-hmm. she was there and some other girls that like you know went on to do like a hundred seasons of bad girls club and whatever yeah. they did after that <laughs> Um, that is not fun. Your, your crowd of people. No, right it wasn't there. my crowd. <laughs> but I liked Natalie. Actually, we like kept in touch and became friends after okay. that. Um, she was cool. 
But yeah, so G and I were friendly after that. I mean, we weren't really like good friends, but right. it wasn't like animosity. It was still there. Yeah. She, during the whole process, she, I think, probably changed the most. Mm -hmm. Cause she, but then she started to reveal a lot yeah, about, you did. know, postpartum and, you know, all that yeah, stuff. Yeah. And I think it was just so crazy because, I mean, she's only a year older than me, but what? after being a mom, it really changes you so she much. Was a year older? Yeah. Than she, me? I was 26 at the time and she was 27. Um, she looked, she Never looked mind. older, I'm but also she, had, she did. I mean, I get it. Going through pregnancy is a lot, yeah. you know? And so I think that it was just such a difference. Once you're a mom, I didn't, you know, we would have been better friends now yeah. that we're both moms, I think. And I think she got a divorce too. She's gotten divorced since then. Yeah. Um, I don't really keep in touch with her or anything like that, mm -hmm. but I knew that she got divorced. Um, I felt bad for her because right. her husband seemed nice. Yeah. You know, and that sucks. Yeah. But you might have just had that, had enough. But probably. You know, hopefully I mean, she'll she was find definitely out super bitchy, but she looks really, yeah. she's really pretty, but she was Well, you have bitchy. to be pretty if you're going to be mm -hmm. bitchy. You cannot be ugly and bitchy. It doesn't work like that. Two yeah. negatives? No, <laughs> it just doesn't work. Okay, so have you uh, kept in touch with Courtney? Um, a little bit. Like, we're Facebook friends. Okay. Um, let me see. Who am I missing? It was Amber. A I liked Amber. Yeah, randomly I was watching, like, there was a show Southern Charm Savannah, not, like, the main Southern Charm, and Amber, like, appeared on an episode. Oh, really? Yeah, just, like, a friend of one of the cast. That's why. Oh, okay. But I keep it up with her on Facebook. She's still single. I always it's thought she was a lesbian. She might. I mean, maybe, because she's still single. I, I mean, no, really. Even though during the show, I'm like, I, I have pretty good <laughs> gaydar. I and never I was thought like, that, but I mean, it makes sense. I was like, I think she's a lesbian. She just hasn't, like, come out <laughs> to the world. I don't think she's come out to herself if she is. She was, maybe. like, just kind of asexual, I felt Yeah. Like. Okay, yeah. so do you still consider yourself a Jewish American princess? I am now. I'm definitely a queen because okay. my two little girls are the princesses okay. of the family. Okay. And, like, if you see me with them, I'm, de I'm like, their servants, basically. Basically, yeah, I That's mean, motherhood. Diva. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm like wiping their butts, like doing whatever. Yeah. Besides, I'll clean up after them that way. I'm right. just like not going to like take the trash out. Or I'm like, like I wiped an ass anything. already today. I think I'm good. <laughs> yeah, I shouldn't have to do anything my else. Two and a half year old is not potty trained yet, Ugh. and I'm like, girl, I'm sick of wiping your butt. Like, you need to get potty trained. On it'll it'll happen. It's time. I think it took me about a week and a half, <laughs> maybe two weeks, to potty train my daughter. I mean, she's seventeen now. It's hard to now. potty train. It's it's not it's not fun because <laughs> you're not. gonna clean up some shit and piss, mm -hmm. you know, during the process. No. Um, do you think you'll ever do reality TV again? I do, but the next time I do it, I would like to executive produce something, yeah. and I have ideas and concepts in mind. I have to get my mommy makeover first. I'm getting one next year. You are, and the baby is 17. But <laughs> I'm getting one. That's next fine. Year. Well, there's never too late. No. What are you I, going to do? I want to get a. So I need to lose. 80 to 100. Oof. Okay. And after that, I want to get a tummy tuck, a boob lift, and then I want to get lipo on my arms. Mm -hmm. um, but if for some odd reason I became like super rich, I want everything from right. chin to toes done. Like, I think I deserve it. And so when you're creating those reality shows. Yeah, come see my dad, girl. I, you won't you, operate on me, but. You, you can operate on, on me. And if you have a reality <laughs> show, I think we make good, I make a good sidekick. Yeah, I'm just saying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're the opposite. What sign is he, your husband? Pisces. Interesting. Yes, 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 yes. He, he is he very sensitive? He's very sensitive. Yeah. Pisces yeah. Are. And if is. they're mad, watch out. Yeah. Or not. Is yeah. that you? He doesn't get mad very often. <laughs> I don't well, have to. I have her. <laughs> she, she's my samurai pit bull. Yeah. yeah. Well, he calls me a verbal That's samurai. Um, <laughs> so what was the best and worst experience of being on TV? Hmm. The best, I guess just the best was like the fun times we had. There mm. were so many fun times. It's hard to like name them all, but I think it was just such a fun thing to be doing when I, I'm glad that I did it when I, before I was married. Right. When I was in my 20s, I had so much fun just filming a bunch of shows. I lived in L.A. after law school. Um, and I could just be myself right. and, like, focus on myself and just have so much fun because I didn't have kids. I didn't have anyone yeah. else to be responsible to. Yeah. And so I could act however I wanted. It's like I wasn't embarrassing anyone. Right. Like my parents didn't care. They were laughing and thinking it was funny. So right. that was the good thing about it. But I guess the worst part about it was – there were so many people that were just laughing with me and realizing I was, you know, being ridiculous on purpose, as mm. were like most people, you know. Right. But the worst part was people that weren't 
like savvy enough to understand that. Mm -hmm. And that's why I moved to LA for a little bit is there everyone totally got it. And they Mm -hmm. were like, oh, you're so funny. I had like acting coaches come up to me and they're like, I loved it. You know, (laughs) whereas here, like I had people talk badly about me to like my brother. Oh, wow. My mom got like literally a hate mail. But this was after The Bachelor, like over 10 years ago when people like sent mail instead of like hate emails. What would they need to Um, say? Telling her that she did a bad job raising me since I didn't know how to make a bed. And my mom's like, I taught you how. And I'm like, Mom, you shouldn't take these people seriously. Not at like, all. Obviously, this person's like a loser with way too much time Nothing on their Nothing to hands. do in the world. Um, seriously. I mean, I know how to make a bit. I just don't do it. I just do choose it. not to. Yes, like, I just don't. I can clean. I just don't want to. It's boring. I don't have time yeah, for it. Yeah, and know? I'm almost 40, and I still <laughs> feel that way. I'm like, oh, no. What's the point of it? You're just like, going to unmake it the next yeah, day. Yeah, I'm like, Southern Charm's about to come on. Chris Lee yeah. Lowe's Best is on afterwards. I don't have time. I love Southern Charm. It's so it's good. So good. It's so I feel juicy. like if I could be on any show, um, I would love to be on Southern Charm. Mm-hmm. I, I love Cameron because she's a mom, mm-hmm. too. But also Vanderpump Rules. I know um, Sheena. Mm-hmm. We're not good friends, but I'm friends with her. Right. We used to be friends, I should say. I still have her number. But I think that they're just having so much fun. And yeah. a lot of them are, like, my age or older. But they're still just, like, running around, like, having way too much fun. Yeah. Don't you think so? I mean, that's what you're supposed to do. I yeah. mean, we were having this conversation earlier because I think he what, – what law changed about an age? What was it? Oh, in Texas, they mm-hmm. signed uh, Senate Bill 21, which makes uh-huh. the uh, minimum age for buying cigarettes 21. Effective yeah. September 1st. We were always smoking, unfortunately, in high school. I don't smoke at all. Yeah. I always said I'll quit when I'm pregnant, and I did, and I never smoke again. And I always yeah. do that. And that's but, exactly what I did. But that is how I stayed skinnier. It does help. Seriously. It does help. I was telling him, I'm like, <laughs> I think that people should not get married or have kids until they're 30. I do, too. Yeah. I'm like, 20 it's should be about young. education. Traveling, yeah. having fun, figuring out who you are. Right. Your frontal lobe finally closes at yeah. 25. You know. That's true. I yeah. definitely, like, I have a law clerk right now. She finished her first year of law school and she's 23. And I think of her as, like, so young. Mm-hmm. But I'm like, I was that young once and right. a lot like her in certain ways. But it's a huge age difference. Yeah. How old you are know? you now? 36. Really? I just turned 36 and I decided for the first time that I'm just going to stay. Even though I am saying this and I still tell people my true age, I'd rather just be 35 still because yeah. I just feel like it sounds <laughs> nice. It's a nice like, round number and 36 right. is like climbing up to 40 and I just don't yeah. feel like doing that. Yeah. So it's, 35 yeah. was good. I, I probably will just stay 35 right. and Stop just right start there. lying now, even though I can't really lie because you can Google, <laughs> Google it, it and like see my age on the internet. Yeah. So I guess I... I'm just going to keep aging. Look, I don't care what the <laughs> interwebs say. I know when I was born, okay? Yeah, and I'm 35. Exactly. So was there ever a misconception about you from the reality shows that you've done? Um, I do think that people didn't realize that I was intelligent, even though I'm an yeah. attorney now, mm-hmm. because I'm not like pseudo intellectual. If mm-hmm. I felt like acting like that, I could. And I could right. sit around like using legal jargon and really big words and acting like very uppity if I felt like it. But that's just not my personality. Right. I think you can still be like a fun loving person Mm -hmm. and be smart at the same time. And you don't have to like constantly show off that you're smart. Right. I I agree. That was a misconception. And, you know, I don't think until I like became an attorney, even though I was in law school until I passed my bar exam and like I have my own law practice, even today, like I can run and ran into someone. She's like, I didn't know you were a lawyer. I thought I knew you had been on The Bachelor and I thought you were just a mom. And first of all, you can't ever be just a mom mom. because it's such a hard job. But yes, I'm also a lawyer. You know, and so I, I can't. I hate that women shit. still say that. Just, yeah, a, just mom. a mom, like you're responsible for a human, like a person, and like I'm yeah. responsible for two humans. I'm still like really impressed with myself. Thank God that I'm like keeping them like alive. And, yes, like, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'm, like, Another day went I'm by amazing. and the child is still alive. Yeah. I'm doing good. Yes, I'm really proud of myself. Yeah, every now and then, now and then, my mom would say something like, "Look, I've kept this child alive for 17 years." Give me my props on me. <laughs> Give me my props. Okay, so That's Erica, true. I really am just so super stoked that you came down yes. here to do the show. Please tell the Libra Launch audience how they can follow you on social media, what upcoming events you're going to be at, and any and everything about you go. Okay, so if you want to follow my law firm, it's at Erica Rose Law. And me is at Erica the Rose on Instagram and on Twitter. And you can even follow my kids. They're on there too. Oh, how cute. 
Um, Colin when, and Aspen. Yes. Mm-hmm. Na- if I have a boy, he's going to be named Kingston. Kingston. Cute. Even, I don't really like that place. I just love the name King. Kingston. Yeah. And the nickname is King. Yes. <laughs> exactly. Yes, yes, yes. Exactly. All right. And so if anyone is in the need of you for as an attorney, how can I contact yes. you? Contact um, www.ericaroselaw.com or erica at ericaroselaw.com or just Google Erica Rose Law Firm. You'll have my law firm phone number. I'm located in Greenway Plaza. And so. whenever we upload this video, we'll make sure to put Erica's information on there. If you want her phone number, slide me a hundred dollar bill and I might <laughs> give it to you. I'm just kidding. So we will be back and I will award the bitch please of the week. Thank you. Bitch, please. You be rolling down the street. Telling stories, bitch, you never tell the truth. Bitch, please. Everybody know you lying, bitch, cause all you do is lie. Welcome back to the Libra Lounge with Keisha. I have another special guest in the studio with me tonight. Some of you may know her as Titty Pool Mom or Booby Mom or that chick who had her titties out at the water park. But her name is actually Misty Dojero. Did I say it right? Yeah, you got it. You got it. I said it right. Okay, I've been practicing like all day. Okay, so you, everyone in Galveston County, Harris County, probably I'm thinking it's going to be probably nationally is talking about your story. It's there. It's there. Okay, so in case you've been hiding underneath a rock and you have not heard her story, Missy was at a Texas City water park at the Nestler Center, correct? Yeah, Nestler okay. Aquatica. Uh-huh. She was there with her. How old is your baby? He's 10 months. 10 months old. What's his name? Max? Max. Max. And you were there with two three-year-olds as well. Uh, they're four. They're four, four-year-olds. Yeah. Okay. So she was at the Texas City water park and her baby got hungry. What time were you guys there? About 4.45, almost 5. Okay, five. that's getting on at dinner time. I'm hangry around yeah. that time of the day. I need to eat something. Um, her baby was hungry. It was time for him to feed. And do you breastfeed exclusively? You know, he eats solids, okay. but he does not take a bottle. He doesn't take a bottle. Right. Okay. So, Misty, like, if my kid who's 17 is hungry right now, I'm like, okay, we got to feed this bitch. You know, um, <laughs> I'm not going to deny her food because then, you know, she start acting a fool and, you know. So, her 10-month-old baby is hungry and Misty starts to breastfeed him. Were you inside of the... Well, where were where, where were you? Yeah, so there's like a um like a like a little play area. The kids climb up and then they slide down. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was like a, a little off from that. I think it's okay. like one foot of water I was sitting in. You know, I wasn't like completely under the water, but I was sitting in the water. Mm-hmm. The boys had to be in arm's reach. You know? Okay, right. You know, even with life jackets on, if oh, they yeah. get caught under, like I have to pick them yes, up. Yes, you know. Of so yeah, I was sitting there, and mm-hmm. you know. And I, like I had a small slit in my bathing suit, mm-hmm. like a peephole. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I saw your bathing suit. Yeah, yes, I like saw it's that. like a little peephole there, you know. So I just shifted it over to the right side mm-hmm. and exposed one nipple, and he latched on like naturally, you know. Right. And that's when you know a little lifeguard came from behind me mm-hmm. and was like, "Ma'am, are you?" Are you breastfeeding? Mm-hmm. You know, and of course I turn around and I'm like, yeah, I am. No, I'm doing kitty pool. What the <laughs> fuck do you think I'm doing? Yes, I'm breastfeeding my child. Yeah, yeah. And so, okay, so these lifeguards, I'm going to assume they are probably high school kids or early 20s. Oh, absolutely. They don't know anything about life. Right. Exactly. Probably why he asked you, were you breastfeeding when he saw a baby latched onto your breast? <laughs> Okay, so you're feeding your baby. The lifeguard comes over. He asks you if you're breastfeeding. Then what happens? Yeah, I tell him, yeah, I am. And he says, ma'am, you can't do that here. It's just a public pool. Um, Yeah, definitely. So when he said that, did he say, ma'am, you cannot breastfeed here. This is a public pool. Or did he say, ma'am, you cannot have your breasts exposed. This is a public pool. No, you cannot do that here. This is a public pool. Okay, so then from there, what happened? So then, you know, of course, I, you know, stood my ground and I'm like, well, um, yeah, I definitely can. Maybe you need to go ask somebody right. thinking like surely the manager knows better. Yeah, it's going to dismiss him and tell him, please leave her alone or give her some space right. or absolutely she can breastfeed. But that's not the reaction I got from her either. Was that the, the African-American female? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What did she say? Oh, she came, you know, and she come over there and she's like, ma'am, are you breastfeeding? I said, yes, ma'am, I am. And she's like, no, ma'am, you can't do that here. And I said, oh, well, absolutely, yes, I can. So why did she say you could not breastfeed there? Um. So I did hear on the 
I heard on her the dash the oh, body gosh, cam. That, that body cam. I video. heard on the body cam that their policy says you cannot be um, exposed. Okay. So All maybe right. she was clearly not educated on the difference mm -hmm. between having your breast out for the purpose of breastfeeding right. and going topless. Yeah, there's a there's a big difference. And let's just you know, I'm gonna be the asshole here. <laughs> Y'all were in Texas City. Uh huh. You can't tell me that Texas City has not seen every kind of ass cheek out, coochie hair from the back, tattoo titties, any and everywhere in Texas City. You got people walking around with no shoes on at the what, what's what's the grocery store chain there? Kroger, Dollar Tree. Okay, it's I mean I find it so hard to believe that you a mom breastfeeding your baby was just so offensive to these people that yeah. i know goddamn well they have seen everything that woman the manager her hair was offensive to me oh, wow. i didn't like it mm -mm, <laughs> no it's, mm -mm. i would have been like please give me a minute to go back redo this call my stylist come hook me up before i get on camera she was a hot fucking mess <laughs> so i you know i watched the video of the officer and actually producer James and I were talking earlier today. It seems like there was just a case of ignorance all the way around. I, there's no, there's not a better word for that. Yeah. Like the lifeguards, you know, I'll say this, I'll, I'll give the lifeguards the benefit I'll of the doubt pass this yeah. time yes. only because it's a summer job. They're probably young, had no idea what's going on. He was probably trying to look at your titty. Um, but the, the manager and the police officer, that was that was ignorant. They should have known better. Yeah, and then they were actually asking each other on the video, do you want her to leave? Do you want her to leave? She doesn't have to leave, it but made, do you want her to leave? No, What? now you want her to leave? She's gotta leave. It made no sense to me that they put the power, the, the officer upholds the law, mm -hmm. the manager manages the pool, Right. but you guys totally dismissed that and gave all of the power to the young, Life uh, lifeguard. Right. So he ultimately. So what? Then why did we call anybody in the first place? I don't know, but I, you know, my husband and I, we were. He was like, "Well, the officer doesn't know what could he have done." I said, "Well, I don't know. Call headquarters and say, can someone open up a law book and see what the law is?" Which producer James, you have exactly what the law states. Yeah, the law is uh, painfully and simply clear. It says a, uh, a woman is authorized to breastfeed any place a woman is authorized to be. Yeah. Which means correct anywhere. Yes, period. I think I've seen bitches at strip clubs breastfeeding their babies on their break. I mean, just it, you're feeding your child. There's yeah. nothing sexual. There's nothing offensive about it. You know, we were even talking about like if I had a baby right now, if I were in the same situation for me, it would have been I would have probably brought a bottle because I don't want anyone seeing my 40 year old saggy titties. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to take that risk. I, you know, they would have been like, ma'am. For the sake and the love of God, put them away. Right. But that's just me. But I didn't exclusively breastfeed my baby. I mean, I had to pump yeah. and give her the breast milk. Yeah, I did with the first. I pumped mm -hmm. with the first. With the second one. Just won't do it. He just won't do it. And, and some babies are like that. And it's just not, yeah. I mean, it's almost it's almost about, okay, do I stop feeding and make you take a bottle? Do I cut you off from the breast? Right. Or do I do what makes you happy and healthy? You do what makes them happy and yes. healthy. You yeah, know? absolutely. So I felt my heart really broke for you. And I have a very cold, bitter black heart. <laughs> but it actually started to melt and cry for you when I saw you crying because I did. you were by yourself. I Yes, I was by myself. And I never go by myself. And the one I mean, time. And the one time I go by myself. And we had just came from, you know, um, going off road out of park, you know, we were at an off road park, and mm -hmm. so we came in from out of town. And my husband's like, you know what, I'm gonna take a nap. Mm -hmm. So we were at my mother in law. So I was like, well, then I'm gonna take the boys to cool off, right. burn some, burn some steam, you know. Yeah. And um, and yeah, I mean, my intentions were not to go to the park to cause a ruckus. Right. You know what I mean? I I need the less attention as possible. I'm right. tired. You know, I'm exhausted. Just let me. You got enjoy. three little kids. I have two, but three with me you that had day. Three with you yeah. that day. That's but, a, I would have been like, hell no. I, I, at one point, not gonna do this. at one point, I was thinking, this is a bad idea. <laughs> this is a really bad idea. You know, because I'm so like, you know, vigilant. Yes. Like the water scares me in general. That's why they had life jackets on because. Mm -hmm. Like you trip and fall and you you yeah, know, can drown. I mean, I'm yeah. I, I tell like and my those friends creatures are fast. Those yes. creatures are fast. Everyone makes fun of me because I hate water parks. I'm, and the like, anxiety. Why? I'm like the anxiety of all those people and water. It's too much for me. I cannot do it. Like how do you keep up? Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm like, and my child's damn near grown. She's mm -hmm. 17. I'm like, mm -mm, you're mm -hmm. not old enough to do that. <laughs> okay. So you were crying and trying to exp you know. 
I, I so how embarrassed were you that a cop is coming over there to you telling you to leave? I couldn't, you know, I I was more mad at myself because I couldn't get my words out. Right. You, you know, like I, I wanted to like I, I just I was stumbling my words right. and I couldn't even get the, my words out and I'm you know and I felt defeated yeah at that point in time yeah. and, and I never wanted to um, like argue with the police because I'm like if you push the issue with him he easily could have find a loophole yeah. and arrest your ass yeah you know what I mean and, and then I'm like you've got your the kids, then my, all the yeah kids and then my kids are screaming and crying right. and, and, and oh gosh so so and they my uh, my my brother in law is a sheriff mm -hmm. you know so to have like for them to shine a bad light on an officer right. would have not have been good. You know, right. so this is the only reason I really didn't my stand my ground with the officer because right. I'm like, this man's gonna arrest me and I got my baby on my hip and my yeah. toddlers are right here. It wasn't worth it at that point. Right, but you yes, know? you you could tell that you were completely defeated. I felt so bad for you. I'm like, was there not another mom somewhere around that was like, hey, we saw what happened. She's just breastfeeding her baby. Did no one and come to your defense? No one knew what I was doing. That's okay. the big point. Okay. Like, no one even knew for people to say my breasts were exposed or that I was making a scene or cursing out all the staff. How come nobody even knew what was happening? So Girl, they act people... like you were out there showing your titties, <laughs> shaking them, putting milk all over them, <laughs> shaking them and everything. Like yeah. all the internet thugs have been out today Girl. with a different story. I'm like, mm-hmm, but did, did she say that to her face? Yeah. You know what I mean? But I can tell you what, I, I was majorly concerned about your eyelashes because oh. they look so good <laughs> but i'm like oh my god she is going to cry one of her lashes off <laughs> like i'm no, like they're extensions they, they're, they're yeah, extensions like, they're gonna get loose and one's gonna come out she's yeah. gonna have to make an appointment tomorrow to get that one replaced i was just like wow that bitch's eyelashes look really good though <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> When you're a mom, that's, I mean, if this is the only thing I can do in a day is have yes, lashes on, yes. that's where I go with. I'm like, yes. you know, it's raw and uncut. This is me on a day. You looked cute. <laughs> uh, you know, so, okay. So the next day comes and you've got protesters out there. Yes. So were they at Texas City City Hall or were they at the Nestler Center? We were protesting? at the Nestler Center. And how you many know, women? I Over 20. And, you know, yeah. I didn't know not one single woman there. Mm -hmm. None. None. I mean, you know, I had a lot of friends reach out, right. but not one of those moms that were there did I know. Right. You know? Because, I mean, you know, women, we're all about supporting one another and women empowerment and things like that. But the, people say it all the time, but then they don't have the actions to back it up. But yesterday was a, a display that those women came yeah, out to you, support you. You don't mess with lactating moms. No, you yeah, do yeah. not mess with. I You'll mean, get that's like, in the face with breast milk. I'm telling you, that's like a, a llama mama. You know what I yeah. mean? That saying, I which I just learned that terminology. That's like, I'll be really nice to you when you're nice to my people, but I'll kick you in the face yes. if you're not. Uh -huh. That's a lactating mom. You know, it's and like, it's just you. You don't come between a mom and her baby. Oh, oh no, no. You know what I mean? No, no. And I felt so bad when I saw you. You know, leaving, and you're trying to gather the two four year olds. You've got the baby on your hip, and I'm just like. Oh my God. I, yeah. I, it was just like, no, even the manager could have come up to you and say, you know what? I'm really sorry about this. Let me help you out. Is there anything we can do? But there seemed to be no sympathy from the, not the cop, Nobody. the manager, the Nobody. You know, look, little boy, little lifeguard <sighs> boy. Yeah, you gonna get a pass this one time. But do not ever, 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 ever kick out a breastfeeding mother. <laughs> now you know the law. You cannot. I do think that. in some way, somewhere in that in the body cam, he says she acts like she doesn't have to listen to me. And then he, someone also says something no, about you I, covering up the baby with the, the blanket. The officer said you can't sit around with your tits out <gasps> if you're going <laughs> to feed your baby. Go under a blanket. So it's a hundred degrees. It's Texas summertime he wants you to put a blanket over you and the baby then some mom would see you and say oh i'm calling cps she's yeah. mothering that child with the heat yeah. you know you can't do that and some babies don't like to be covered up yeah, no when no my guy kicks me in the face he puts yeah. a toe in my nose yeah. i mean it's just he's squirmish yeah and know? sometimes everyone they kept saying oh no she, i heard she had both of her breasts out you know what i have seen other i've been around women who have been breastfeeding and some of the babies they reach over and play with the other titty or they kick the other bra piece right. side of the bra off i mean it's it's everyone is sexualizing it yeah is the problem yeah and, and it's, it's so it has sad. nothing to do with sex at all not not at all i'm like hey look i do not have enough confidence to whip these bad boys out mm -hmm. okay i've breastfed for the past four years non-stop right my first oh my one until he was three and a half 
until I got pregnant with this guy. Three and a half. Yes, girl. So these things are not hotty toddies. You know oh, what I mean? Man. I'm not walking around topless, not even at home. Three years old? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, at three, I, I mean, he should he, just go, I want some. Yeah. <laughs> and get it for himself. Pretty much. I mean, it was so bad that he was YouTubing and breastfeeding at the same And I might have a picture of that. I could probably send you over. That is so funny. Yeah, he was YouTubing and breastfeeding at the same it's time. Like, you know? It's like you're, and you're then eating I cut it and watching a show. Hey, why not? Yeah. Right? You can. Why can't I, Mom? Exactly. Yeah, I'm serious. So, I mean, it was. It's. it's not taboo for me to do it my right. family's used to it right. you know what i mean that's like it's just it is what it is we, right. we i i i just i go with whatever the sh you know yeah you, you know i'd rather you pop your titty out and feed your baby than your baby go ape shit and just you know start throwing stuff and it, you know what i mean because babies when they're hungry they're hungry they don't think about anything else they, they don't yeah. care where you are i say it all the time toddlers are assholes oh god they're the <laughs> biggest assholes they that really is like are. toddlers are assholes yes. they want it they want it and he's not a toddler but still you know i mean that's how they are they're demanding and they're selfish yes i mean it's every it's all about them that's part of being a toddler but in this case it's not even it, it, it's a natural need that we all have which is to eat yes absolutely okay so you get kicked out. I know your parents are just so proud, aren't they? They are. I'm my husband wants <laughs> like my husband. Oh, you mean, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what? That, I, I'm not even gonna lie. That crossed my mind as I was leaving the park. You know, I'm like wiping my tears away. Right. You know, and I'm like, what are they? My, what is my mother-in-law gonna say? Yeah. Is she gonna? Is she gonna think what I did was wrong? Because right. I felt that when he made me leave, I felt for a moment like, did I do something wrong? Right. You know yeah. what I mean? And so like I'm like wiping my tears, and I get home, and my four-year-old says, "Papa, Papa." That that man that cop told mama she can't feed Max and I lost God. it. I like I you would have thought my dog died. Okay, I was like, <laughs> oh <laughs> like huffing and puffing because my four year old was like, why can't you feed Max? I right. don't understand. Why do we have to leave? Why can't you feed Max? You know. Ugh. So that's when like my husband was livid. I'm sure he was like, how about you post that on that mom's group you always talk about? Monster Gavs <laughs> County. Girl. Look, they can make or break you on that one. Okay. <laughs> they have like, to ruin your career. <laughs> I'm telling you, that's what he said, and I was like, you know what? You're right. You're right. You know, almost like reaching out. Like, what yeah. do you guys think? What would y'all do kind of right, thing? Right. And boy, those moms came with a vengeance. Yeah, they they are some little mommy thugs on that group, you know? <laughs> okay, so you leave. So what happens later on that day or what happens the next day? Do you get contacted by anyone? I, that night, that night, I think it was um, um, NBC? Maybe mm -hmm. ABC. One of one of the uh, networks called and, uh -huh. and said, "Hey, I you know I've gotten your story. I want to you know can I talk to you?" Mm -hmm. And I'm like, "Absolutely." Right. They were like, well, "Are you going to be in this nursing tomorrow?" And I'm like, "A nursing?" You know, I didn't realize there you was a mom oh, okay. was like setting up. Me. Yes, wow. I was like, "Okay, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm going to be there. Right. You know, I'm going to stand my ground with all the rest of them. That's the reason they're going." So what did the people who work at the water park say when you guys were out there protesting? Absolutely nothing. nothing. Mm -hmm. No one came out. I mean, don't get me wrong. There was a lot of people in like nice. I mean, these were no longer the staff members. I'm sure right. they were higher ups. Mm -hmm. They had to have been. They had to be with had, that incident. You know, yeah. They had, you know, decent clothes on. Right. No more t-shirt, red t-shirts because right. all of them wear mm -hmm. those red t-shirts. No, they didn't have those on. So I was like. Because they yes. had a feeling. I'm sure oh, I'm course. sure news stations had contacted them already. About, yeah. So yes. they knew. Yes, yes, yes. So none of them said anything. So yeah. have you been, you know, I saw that the city of Texas City did release, uh, have a press release. They released a statement or if, if you can even call it that. No, it's generic. Yeah, very generic. Yes. So I think no, they just plucked my name in there. You know what I mean? Uh, like, yeah. <laughs> let me just blink. Yeah. That name there. Acknowledging that uh, this happened to a person. Yes. You know, so you still have not heard anything from the city of texas city. no i haven't i haven't well i saw on facebook that schlitterbahn has given you uh what is it a free pass to come yes for i've had like three acres food truck a mom at a boutique you know uh, you know all these things and then i hear the negative side of it like a freeloader bitch i you work five, two anything. jobs right 
And she's still breastfeeding. I work two jobs. Right. I, you know, I mean, I'm educated. I'm a registered nurse. Uh -huh. I don't need anybody giving me any handouts. Do I appreciate the gesture? Absolutely. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I, I, and I don't comment or, or respond to those messages because I'm like, not today, Satan. Yeah. Not today. Yeah. We call those internet thugs because they all, <laughs> they get, they get King Kong balls when they're behind their uh, phone screen or their keyboard, yeah. but they wouldn't say that to your face. Yeah, no, you know? I am like, you know, and, and it's so grateful to know that, you know, there's other moms, Texas City moms who, you know, who own businesses who are like, right. you know what, come here, do this. Right. I'm going to offer you that, you right. know, like I told my brother, even if I don't take them up on their offer, I this appreciate nice. the gesture. Yeah. Because as a woman, seeing a mom cry and it has something to do with her baby, it's, it's, you know, it's a sisterhood that we all have, you know, and we would do anything for our kids. And I, I mean, watching you have to gather your baby and the other two kids and just a cop is telling you, making you leave and they let you walk out by yourself. Yeah, I did. I that did. was, I was like, oh my God. Like that's, that's why people are reaching out because everyone else realizes how one, it was wrong, how insensitive they were about it. Yes. You know what I mean? And yes. then the simple fact that no one has even contacted you. No, they haven't. They haven't. No one's apologized or, or, or reached out or said anything. Yeah. Cause I mean, you can see the conversation, you can see and hear the conversation that the police officer, the manager and the lifeguard were having. Yes. None of them knew what the hell to do. No, I no. mean, did we follow protocol at, at, at the Nestler Center? I mean, when she didn't know what to do next, mm -hmm. is protocol to call the police? I just, I, I, no, I, probably not. I don't I, think I, I so. Don't, I'm sure there's somebody on call. There's a, you know, a higher up that you right. can reach out to, an right. 800 number or something. I don't know. Right. Something yeah. to know, hey, we have a breastfeeding mom here. What are we supposed to do? And that's what I was telling producer James. Or, you know what? How about if she came up to you and, you know, didn't make a scene and say, ma'am, I understand you're breastfeeding your baby and you've got two little ones here. Let's just say someone was uncomfortable. How about, how about, you can come in my office and do that. We'll watch the two little ones. Or something other than calling the police like you've committed a crime. Yes. You yes. know? Yes, 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 yes. Address the fact that I made somebody uncomfortable. Right. Ask me to get out of the pool. I mean, right. anything like that. And right. people talk about oh, a bodily fluids. Listen. There's no people. way. People? At a public at a at public a pool? pool? Yes. Oh, my God. That people piss in and little kids slobber in and throw up in? Ew! Like, people don't really? shower before they go to the I, public pool. I haven't. I, mean? I didn't see that. that oh they yeah. Said about, yeah. Oh yeah. wow. No, out of everything in a public pool, I think breast milk would be like very, a, yeah. a welcome a very change. Scant, yeah, a scant amount of. Oh, breast I, I don't care if you pour five gallons. Out. It's still better than eighteen little kids' is piss strip. <laughs> I, I, yeah, exactly, and we have to go back to the fact that breasts are for feeding. Yes. Children, they are not, they're, they're not supposed to, they, they're not created to be sexual. At they're all. there as a source of nourishment right. for neither, a child. Well, right. neither are kneecaps, but some of those are sexy. Just turn your mic off, okay? Yes, Don't say anything else on your mic, okay? And edit that out, because don't nobody want to hear your stupid ass comment. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I, 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 you know, when I saw the story, I was like, oh my gosh, let me reach out to her and, you know, I want to hear this because everyone was going crazy and just I'm like, no, I hadn't even heard about it. I'm like, okay, let me, let me see this video. And I'm like, are they serious? Yeah. Like that yeah. is Texas city police should be embarrassed. I, yeah, you, you totally did. Did you did not do yourself justice by post no. somebody that reviewed that video did not watch it till the end. No. Cause it looked really bad. It's yeah. You and know, I mean, you totally lost every ounce of respect you had with the comments that you made at the end. Yeah, and then he said tits. Yeah. Like, that's so unprofessional. <laughs> You're like, what? no, he should not be allowed to say your tits. Yeah. Not while he's on the clock. You know what I like? Who does that? I don't, there was so, you know, when we started this conversation, I said there was a lot of ignorance, but there was a lot of fucking stupidity going on there, <laughs> you know? And it just didn't get him. I mean, it was like three monkeys all looking at each other, trying to figure out a little puzzle. I don't know, here. Yeah. I don't yeah. know, here. Yeah, 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 definitely, definitely. So, Missy, is there anything that you want to say in regards to the incident that happened to you? Um, Good or bad, Um, I... I'm glad the good that came out of it. You know, people all over the world are seeing mm -hmm. it, standing up. People are feeling empowered, hopefully, you know, knowing that, you know, I can do this. And yes, right. 
even if they didn't know the laws, now they do. Right. You know yeah. what I mean? And then, you know, in the bad, I tell people when I'm getting some negative comments, I'm like, thank you for your support, good or bad. Yeah. <laughs> thank you for shedding light on it, you know? Yeah. And yeah. I, I can't possibly think all of the women and men who have gone to bat for me. Mm. I haven't gone on fighting with people on Facebook yeah. because they are not worth my time. Not at all. But people have. Yeah. Friends have, set, you know, are going berserk on people right. you know standing up for me for my character and i right. appreciate that and i don't know how to thank everyone for going to bat for me right you know? you know what your character should not even come into question in this situation because it had nothing to do with your character right you were right. just being a mom right plain right. and simple right absolutely well we thank you for joining us Yay. and the bitch please of the week goes to the whole entire <laughs> goddamn city of texas city <laughs> we will see you guys next week bye bye